Hello, my friends, and welcome back to my channel. It is Wednesday, so it is time for my weekly weigh-in, and we're going to discuss a topic related to weight loss. Yes, I am still using the Weight Watchers topics because, heck, I get it for free. I might as well, so well, I just put my own spin on it. So how did I do on the scale? I was down 0.2. So to me, that's pretty much a maintain, and that is fine with me. Um, I am very puffy. I My ankles are puffy. My fingers are puffy. So I need to figure out why that is. And I touched on it yesterday during my full day of eating. I think it might be um, we've switched up our exercise a bit this last week, and I'm just wondering if my muscles are holding on to some water to repair themselves. Um, I don't know. I had a really good um, week of eating. I mean, and it was a loss, so I'm not gonna complain at all. Um, never gonna complain. And you know what? I don't even complain about a gain when I deserve it, because there are times I deserve it. So anyway, I'm trying to grab my tea, sorry. That is my weigh-in, I am down 0.2. So I'm happy with that. I am going to, what did I do right last week? What did I do wrong last week? Um, what did I do right? I got more water in, which is good for me because I'm not a big water girl. Um, if I get like 48 ounces a day in just plain water, that's really good for me. So that's what I, 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 tr I strive for between 60 and 64, no more than 64 for me. Um, I've had that discussion with my doctor and my nutritionist and they both agree no more than 64 ounces because then you start diluting your good minerals and everything like that so I can't even get 64 in but we're working we're working on it um now if I count my tea and stuff then yes definitely over that um what else did I do right last week you know I moved my exercise was great last week I did pretty well eating last week I'm not gonna I mean I had a couple little Treats that I probably should have rained a little bit in on, but otherwise that was fine. Um, yeah, so what did I do wrong last week? I had a couple little treats that I shouldn't have probably. This week ahead, I'm going to just concentrate on doing everything I have been doing. We have, what do we have this weekend? Because that's what I always like. During the week, it's pretty easy. Um we don't generally have a lot of things going on during the week. Weekends are where things get a little fuzzy. Saturday, we have, we are going out to breakfast Saturday morning. Um, I'm okay with that. That's easy. Uh, I already know what I'm going to have. I know where we're going and what I'm going to have, supposedly, if it all works out. And then um, Saturday night is Pinochle here at my house. I am making tacos so that's pretty easy to rein in and sunday's just a day so we should be okay so looking for a i'm hoping for a pound next week to be honest with you because i'm really close to hitting that eight pounds that i wanted to get off um i might extend that to be 10 or 12 with the summer coming we'll see i don't know but just keep plodding along it's all we can do so this week we're talking about how to handle a small gain. We expect when we become, when we go on a weight loss journey, we expect to lose every week and just see that chart go down, 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 down. Doesn't always happen. I will say when I started, I had that down, 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 down. I think in the eight months it took me to lose my weight, I only had one or two small gains. So I was one of the lucky ones because that's not how it generally happens. Generally, it goes like that. And that's normal. It's our bodies. Just because you have a gain does not mean you ate your face off. There are so many things that can contribute to a gain, especially a small one. Now, sometimes you know you ate your face off. It happens. We are normal and we are human. Sometimes you have a vacation where you overindulged a little bit. It's a vacation. It's one week out of the year it, or two weeks out of the year, whatever. It happens. You just have to get back on track. 
But sometimes we have those unexpected gains and we're like, what the heck? What the heck? If you had a perfect week and you did everything you were supposed to and you still had a gain, it is frustrating. It is very, very frustrating. You just have to remember that there are so many other factors. It could be not going to the bathroom in a day or two. Yes, that does contribute to a small gain. Um, it could be maybe you had a high sodium meal. Um, maybe you had a restaurant meal. That can contribute. You can be holding on to fluid. You could have changed your exercise routine like I've been talking about. If you start exercising a little bit harder or do a different exercise where you are using a different set of muscles, you are, and I, I use the word damage, but I don't mean damage like damage you can't repair. Your muscles get a little bit damaged because they're not used to being used. You're using them. You're using them in a, you know, a pretty good manner. They're trying to repair themselves. So they're holding on to extra fluid. They're holding on to extra water to try to repair and heal themselves. That could be the gain. There's so many reasons for a little gain. And the most important thing is not letting it derail us. Because once you get derailed, it's very, very hard to get back on track. I know from experience. So the best way to think about it is decide... What this says is decide what amount of weight gain will activate your plan. Like, let's say you have gains and you're, th they say, three or more pounds. That's when you have to stop what you're doing and rein it in and have your plan. What is that plan? If you start seeing gains on the scale, is that plan? You need to write down your plan. You need to come up with a plan. And it could be planning your dinners or all of your meals ahead of time and figuring out how much you can eat to stay within your calories, your points, your macros. You can pre-track. So you know, and you're, there's no surprises by the time dinner comes. You know, you have this dinner planned that might be a little bit higher in calories or higher in points or higher in carbs. And if you don't plan for that, you may go a little crazier in the beginning of the day. Let's say you're counting carbs and you're trying to stay with a certain amount of carbs and you know you're having a high carb dinner. Like, you know, it is summertime and you're having a juicy burger on a bun and you're having French fries and you're having corn on the cob or you're having potato salad instead of French fries, whatever. But you know it's gonna be a really high carb dinner. Well, then there are the days you don't have oatmeal for breakfast or you don't have a bagel or an English muffin. They're the days where you have eggs and sausage for breakfast with no bread products, no carb products. You don't have a fruit plate for lunch because you know you're having a high carb dinner. So planning out your day, especially when it's not going to be a normal day, is a great idea. It will help you stay within your macros, within your points, within your calories, whatever it is that you are counting. Um, it says switch up activity routine. Maybe you're getting in a rut and your body is getting used to that two-mile walk you do every single morning. Maybe you could switch that up a little bit. Maybe every, maybe you belong to a gym that has a pool. So maybe instead of walking two miles every day, maybe every third day you can go and swim or do water aerobics. Or maybe you just belong to a gym and do the machines, the weight machines all the time. Maybe you could throw in a quick mile on the treadmill or a quick, five minutes on the stair climber, something to shock your body into, um, you know, like a different mood. Now, like I said, you may have a little bit of um, retention from your muscles, but that should go away pretty quickly. But shock up your body. And I think changing up your food can shock up your body. It says, you know, get to bed a little bit earlier. Weight loss and sleep are directly related. And I have been sleeping like crap lately. And I wonder if that's why I've been struggling a little bit lately to really, really pay attention to everything. And then it says, attend workshops. If you are a WW member and have a workshop, go. If you are not a WW member, find a YouTuber that you can connect with. 
and listen to their videos. If you are a TOPS member, go to a workshop. If you use the Healthy app, maybe it would be worth it for you to spend the $5 a month for the Zoom workshops to get that um, camaraderie, to get that support that you need. Um, if you can't find it on YouTube or wherever, find somewhere to get that support. And then it says reflect on past successes. Think about what you've done to be successful and maybe revisit some of those things. You're not gonna be able to do all of them because you will be overwhelmed. Pick a couple and focus on that. Maybe just focus on planning out your meals or pre-tracking, <coughs> but you need to decide when you're gonna put the brakes on. How much are you willing to gain before you start activating? Maybe it's zero. Maybe you do all these things all the time. And maybe you do have a perfect week and you still have a gain. Whatever you do, we can't let that derail us. We can't. And maybe you thought you had a perfect week and you had a gain. And then you look back and go, oh, you know what? I had that cupcake the other day when I went to so-and-so's house. And, oh, you know what? The next day I forgot I stopped at Starbucks. Oh, wait a minute. You know, we went out to dinner and... I was only gonna eat half and I ate the whole thing. This is why it's important to track everything honestly. You are the only one that is going to see your tracker. It is private. There's no reason to lie about it. Because you know what? You can lie all you want in your tracker. If you ate the food, it's showing up on your booty. It doesn't matter what you write down. It matters what you put in your mouth. So you might as well be honest. And I, I know you don't want to hear this because nobody does. Weigh and measure your food. Because let me tell you, we're very generous with ourselves. I know I am. Weigh and measure your food. It's important. It's important to be accurate, especially if you're having a tough time. If, you know, you have this last couple pounds that doesn't seem to come off and, you know, you feel like you've been doing this forever. Because I know that's what happens. We do this forever. We think we know serving sizes and truly we don't. So weigh and measure your food. Track your food. Track your food honestly. I can't say it enough. Be honest. You pop three little goldfish crackers in your mouth, get them in your tracker. I know you think, oh, Joan, you're ridiculous. Three little goldfish crackers is nothing. Maybe three little goldfish crackers is nothing. But maybe you pop those in your mouth at 10 o'clock in the morning. And maybe you pop three more in your mouth around 1 o'clock. And maybe you pop three more in your mouth around 3 o'clock. And then maybe at night you sat and had a few more. Well, now guess what? You have a serving of goldfish crackers that is four points and 120 calories. I just made that up. I have no idea. That could impact your day. That could impact your weight loss. So if you are not honest about every little thing that goes into your mouth, you might have a tough time. And I know, I know, most people do not like tracking. There are people out there that love to track. They love to see it. They love it. I get that. But there are a lot of people that don't, and you don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it, and I understand that. I do. I do, but you need to decide, do I hate tracking enough to not track and possibly screw up my weight loss journey? Or do I really wanna succeed and it's something I need to do to succeed? You have to decide that. Only you can decide it. But if you're having these little gains, look back, honestly, look back, give it a hard look back and see what you are doing that could possibly be leading to them. And don't make excuses. Don't make excuses. Be honest with yourself. You are the only one that can be 100% honest with yourself. It hurts. It sucks. I'm not lying. It sucks to be honest. But you know what? Sometimes just we have to do it. So it says... We won't sugarcoat it. Gaining weight when you're trying to lose or maintain stinks. It's okay if you feel discouraged, worried, or any other type of way. Just try not to blame yourself or look for a scapegoat. 
You know what? Yes, you can blame yourself sometimes. You can, because guess what? It could be your fault. Now, if you have other issues where you have an illness or something like that, of course that is not your fault. If you just can't shut the pie hole, or if you're not tracking and eating way too much food, or if you're not weighing and measuring and say, I'll give it three points. I'll give it 100 calories. You don't know. You don't know. So some things, yes, you can blame yourself for. It says, you know, it just goes on to say you can plan on how you respond. What are you going to do to turn it around? And that's what we talked about, pre-tracking and planning out your meals and getting enough sleep and changing up your exercise and getting in your water and things like that. You need to build those habits back. Um, and if you have these gains, you can't go hog wild and say, that's it. That's it. I'm eating all zero point foods. I am going to only eat 500 calories a day. I am going to cut out every single carb and not have any. And I am going to go, I'm going to run eight miles today. You can't do that either. My friends, that is not sustainable. It is not going to last. You need to do things with a calm mind, figure out what is going on and repair it. It may not be overnight, but you just have to come up with a plan, a plan that is realistic and a plan you can stick to. And ask for help, you know, ask your family to help. If, if you know, they have snacks in the house that tempt you, ask them to hide them from you. Ask them to, you know, if you have older kids, they can leave stuff up in their bedrooms or, you know, in their car or whatever. So it's not staring you in the face every time you open the pantry if you don't have the willpower to say no. These are the little things you need to do. You need to ask for help and, and get it done. This is important. And your health takes precedence over somebody else's snack. So work with it. Um... That's pretty much about it. Um, you know, they, they said the fast facts are responding to weight gains in a hot state can cause us to overreact or give up. Just like I talked about overreacting, you know, cutting your calories to 500 a day and cutting your points to 10 a day and cutting your, your macros crazy. That's not the correct response. It's a response we all want because we all just want to go crazy with it, but it's not going to work. We got to do things with a level head. Creating a plan. Figure out what caused the weight gain and correct them. And if you do not track honestly, if you do not be honest with yourself, then you're not going to be able to look back and see what has happened. It's hard to be honest with ourselves sometimes. It is hard. Even though we're the only ones to see that tracker, you know, and we plan for one cupcake and eat three, it's hard to put that in there, but you know what? Maybe that tough love will help you in the long run. It will see what it did to your calories and points and macros, and it will help us to not do it again. So that's that. If you have a gain, you have to accept it and move on. There's nothing you can do about it. It's how you react to it that is going to help you change things in the future. And we can react and get a little bit mad because maybe that will help, but we just can't go off track and, and, and go crazy about it. We have to stay level-headed and we just have to do what we have to do. So this week, my friends, we are going to do what we have to do. We are going to correct any problems. And next week, that scale is gonna be super duper kind to all of us if we just do what we need to do. If you do nothing else this week, if you eat your face off this week, if you do nothing else, track it honestly. Just track it honestly. And let's see exactly where we are. Every single bite that goes in your mouth, track it honestly. That is my challenge to you and that is what I am going to do. Every single bite that goes in my mouth, is going to go in my tracker. It usually does, but I, I'm going to be honest, sometimes it doesn't. And and I am a, you know, I can be a, a 
a snack popper sometimes. Um, you know, like when I'm making crackers for the week. Sometimes, well, I always taste one. Sometimes I taste more than one if they're really good. Um, so, you know, sometimes we just have to reel it in, write it down, remember it. We got this. We've got this. We can do it. So thank you so much for spending a little bit of your time today with me. I truly appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would love you to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, all that good stuff that helps YouTube recognize my channel. I will leave a couple videos over here for you to watch, maybe get a little bit more inspo. And we got this, my friends. You've got this. I know we do. Let's, the theme for the week is honesty. Be honest with ourselves. Nobody else is going to see your tracker, but that's your assignment. Have a great, great, great week, and I will see you all in my next video.